On May 10, Polish Financial Supervision Authority KNF, held a tender order of 615,000 zloty around $170,000 to plan and conduct a social media campaign that will focus on the risks associated with cryptocurrencies, pyramid schemes, and forex trading. That sum is hardly impressive, but represents another gesture against crypto by the conservative Polish government, which has already admitted to its investments in FUD media activities in February. Nevertheless, the local crypto community has stood up for itself in an educational response. Winter Disclosures Poland officially recognizes trading and mining of cryptocurrencies, however the state's overall views toward crypto seemed to become more skeptical in the past months. As a trend of suspicion toward cryptocurrencies in Poland emerged alongside the news about the Bitfinex situation, the government's rumored interest in Petro, and the dismissal of Anna Strazinska. The former crypto-friendly Minister of Digital Affairs. In February 2018, Polish journalists reported that the Central Bank of Poland paid about 91,000 zloty, around $25,000, to produce an anti-crypto video. The video was carried out in conjunction with Polish YouTube partner network Gamelin, Google Ireland Limited, and Facebook Ireland Limited, who allegedly helped to distribute the video. Dubbed, I Lost All the Money, the not-so-subtle clip contained no signs indicating that it was paid for by the government or sponsored at all. A popular Polish blogger, Marcin Dabila, played a Gucci-wearing, Corvette-riding crypto-entrepreneur who had invested all his money in a single token and, by the end of the video, had hit rock bottom, wearing shorts and flip-flops. He takes fiat coins out of a public fountain. Previously, Polish journalist and YouTube blogger Karol Pechorek provided more details on the campaign for Co. and Telegraph. There was a product placement deal between NBP and three large YouTube channels, March and W 937,000 subscribers, Visni 818,000 subscribers, and Planeta Facto 1 million subscribers. It's an educational campaign paid from a government-based organization. Someone asked NBP how much they have paid for the campaign and got an answer. Although the video garnered more than half a million views on Dubila's channel alone, its effects seems doubtful. Jacek Wilewski, the secretary of Polish Bitcoin Association PBA, told Cointelegraph that the clip failed to stigmatize the perception of crypto among casual users in Poland as it was unprofessional and stupid. Central Bank hired popular YouTubers among teenagers for this activity, but they aren't economic authorities. Justyna Laskowska Bitbank, the largest exchange platform in Poland, says that while their service didn't experience any client loss after the video aired, the official campaign seems toxic for the environment as it lacked educational value. We're happy to have over 800,000 loyal users, and thus we did not feel the increase in the number of closing accounts. However, the campaign made by the government certainly scared off people who wanted to learn more about cryptocurrency and caused an unfavorable atmosphere around it. Mature response from the community on May 6 the small film studio uploaded a documentary on YouTube called Crypto, with the declared goal of educating the Polish public with basic facts about crypto and blockchain technology. The documentary's director and screenwriter, Cryptocurrency and blockchain enthusiast Peter Pacewich told Cointelegraph that he saw crypto as a brick for building a better world, one with a financial system where everybody is equal. 
My main aim was to educate, educate and educate. Because almost no one knows the fundamentals about Bitcoin and blockchain. Payswitch says that the production was cheaper than the NBP campaign. Although he wouldn't disclose precise figures. To make the film, Payswitch consulted with Stepan Benton, a local crypto enthusiast and YouTuber who helped him with the contacts. The NBP-funded video came out around the time Payswitch started shooting crypto. Shocked by its propagandistic tone, he referred to the video as shit and a piece of crap in the comment. Payswitch held an anti-fiat campaign with funny t-shirts and continued working on the documentary. Now that crypto has been publicly released, he seems satisfied with the results. We decided to publish crypto on YouTube for free and we still received very good feedback. Crypto wasn't made as a direct response for that shitty anti-crypto campaign. But it's a mature answer, nonetheless. At the time of publication, crypto has just over 22,000 views on YouTube. Rhetoric aside, negotiations are underway despite this interchange. Polish Bitcoin Association is currently negotiating with the government on future tax regulations for cryptocurrencies, which are currently non-existent. The task appears to be even more complex as Jacek Wieluski, the spokesperson, argues that Polish politicians don't understand cryptocurrencies at all. Maybe just very few Polish politicians understand what blockchain is. For example, our Prime Minister Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki compared cryptocurrencies to amber gold when speaking in Davos. Amber Gold was a big Ponzi scheme in Poland. Nevertheless, local reports show that representatives of right-wing parties in the country, including Alliance and the Dominant Law and Justice, seem to favor blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Thus, Wojciech Merdzik of Law and Justice said, Regulation of the cryptocurrency market is necessary because of the country's interests. It is essential that cryptocurrency-oriented businesses remain in Poland rather than move abroad. The liberal conservative Civic Party seems to be supportive of crypto as well. While the leftist party Razum does not seem to have a clear stance on cryptos at the moment, however highlighting that mining consumes a lot of energy in the era of climate change. Justyna Laskowska also told Cointelegraph that BitBay representatives are actively engaged in discussions with the Polish government regarding the taxation of cryptocurrencies as well. As misunderstandings and contradictory interpretations of tax regulations have recently affected their users. After meeting with Under Secretary of State Pavel Gruza from the Ministry of Finance, the exchange moved closer toward reaching a reasonable solution. Although one coherent version of the regulations hasn't been yet established, we can already see a big step forward. The unfavorable way of calculating tax for cryptocurrency traders has been withdrawn. On May 21, Poland's Ministry of Finance announced that it will temporarily suspend tax collection for cryptocurrencies. The ministry states it will conduct an in-depth analysis of the crypto space to inform better regulation and taxation policies going forward. Previously, the Ministry of Finance had released a statement clarifying that taxation for cryptocurrency transactions fell into two income tax brackets of 18 and 32 percent. An additional 1 percent levy tax due to civil law agreements was also applied as the agency considered crypto transactions as the transfer of property rights. The community is ready to cooperate. Jacek Wieluski of Polish Bitcoin Association sees regulation as inevitable but by no means a positive development.
I think that cryptocurrencies will become regularized. But in that case, Polish companies, for example, the biggest market, BitBay, might move their headquarters to other countries. Why? Because they have problems with Polish banks that denounce their contracts. The number of followers of Bitcoin in the country is growing. But it's a very difficult time for cryptocurrency businesses. In her turn, BitBay's Laskowska remains positive and business-minded. It can still be fixed, she believes. And the community has its force and value for the country. Poland has an influential community of cryptocurrency users, who are not only traders but also specialists regarding blockchain usage. All these people can cooperate with the government to regulate the industry and make it grow. I believe that the government will see this opportunity for our country.